Hello and welcome to this episode of Gaming with Grey Hunter with me, Grey Hunter, where we're going to do something a little bit different. Again, like uh, with the Tomb Raider video, we're going to do something a little bit different. So in this case, it's going to be modding, and it's going to be modding for Crusader Kings 2, because I was playing through my LP game, and I decided, you know what, I want some flavourable titles to award to different people. So I went for some Imperial flavour titles, and as you can see, there's a mod here, Imperial flavour titles the one I created, and I'm going to show you guys how to create something similar. So first things first, you will need to have Notepad++. It's kind of important. But essentially it's fairly simple to do. So you'll need a mod file so that the launcher knows where to look for things. So I'm going to copy the one that we've already got, and we'll go copy and paste, because generally it's a good idea to go with something that you already know works, and I know this works. so. It's better than starting again from scratch, because if I start again from scratch, I'm probably going to make a mistake. You'll also want to turn on uh, C file extensions, because you'll need to create... Actually, no. I changed my mind. I will do it normally. I'll do it uh, the way that I did it the first time, just so you guys see how you can do it. So you need Notepad. And what you need to do in Notepad is we'll open this one, Notepad++. You can do it in plus plus if you want to, but... Uh, you can do it just as easily in regular notepad. And what you'll need to do is have these two lines, so name and path. Name tells the uh, launcher what to display, and path tells it where it is. So you'll need to create a folder in the CK2 directory in your My Documents. So Paradox Interactive Crusader Kings 2. Create one called Mod. There isn't one there normally, so just create it. It'll be fine. So you go Mod, <clears throat> and then you create the new file. So all you have to do is place these two lines in like this. So we'll get a new text document, go away, and we'll just call it new text document for now. Just place that in like that. Oops, save, yes. And then we'll rename it uh, example mod. Yeah, example mod. .txt, but change this to dot, oops, dot .mod, like so, yes. It'll say that you can't read it, it might uh, come up as a VLC file, but don't worry about it, it's fine. Of course, then you'll need to create a folder with the same name, so example mod, and you'll need to go in here and edit with Notepad++, change it to what you called it, so example mod and actually I can just copy that can't I yes now I'm not by any means a skilled modder I just sort of made it up as I went and it kind of worked so it's okay it'll work yes we want to save it like that all good so now we technically have a functional mod this will tell the launcher to go to there so if we go in here the launcher will indeed display it It'll go, hey, example mod. Won't do anything, but hey, example mod. So next, what you need to do is you need to copy the files over. So you'll want to keep folder hierarchy as well. For a simple titles thing, you'll need a localization folder and a common folder. And in the common folder, you'll need minor titles. And then you'll need to put in a name. So I'm going to copy, because it's the exact same thing that we're doing here, I'm going to copy these two and put them into example mod. There we go. So if you go into common and go to minor titles, you'll have your flavorful titles. Well, you'll have a titles thing. So we'll call it example titles. The name of this doesn't particularly matter, just as long as you keep the file hierarchy. So it'll have to go mod, name of mod, common, minor titles. Otherwise, bad things happen. So then we can open that up. I've already got some pre-done ones in here. I'm going to delete every single one of them. Go, go away. Don't need them. Put that down, and this is where you'll collect all the folders from. So it'll be in your Steam apps, common, Crusader Kings 2. And then you'll need to go in here, collect this one, and go into here, uh, Crusader Kings, collect localization. You don't want any of these files, so basically you can just create empty folders if you want to. But remember, it has to go mod folder, name of mod, common. Well, mod folder, name of mod, 
common and localization and then minor titles in here. So we haven't got anything in there at the moment. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to go to my documents again. Now we want, where are you? This one. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the original one. And this is actually a title that I did not create. This is the example one that I used because it is in the CK2 files, but they don't actually use it for anything. It is uh, naturally set here to a grant limit of zero, which means that it does not exist in the game. So we're just going to use this one. Essentially, we're going to create a Paramount Knight, or we will. So I have changed some of the things here. So obviously, we don't have a Lord Inquisitor title, so we can get rid of that. And we have all these things here. What do they mean? Well, dignity, dignity is a hard-coded thing, and basically it says... Does this title outrank another one that you hold? Generally, the answer will be no. Generally, you'll want to keep it as that. It can be useful, but mm, not really. So, we've got a Paramount Knight with a dignity of 0 0.35. Princes have 0 0.85. So, if you want to outrank a prince, you need to go to uh, 0 0.9. And dukes have, as far as I can tell, 0 0.6. And counts have 0 0.4, as far as I can tell. Show as title is whether or not um, if its dignity outranks the dignity of the title that they already held, this will come up instead. So whatever title Paramount Knight goes to, in my case, we're going to make it uh, Knight of the Realm. It'll go in there. So for an for the example, we're going to set it to 0.5. And the grant limit, we don't need 10, we'll just make it 1. Opinion, how much the people like you more for doing it. Monthly salary, how much gold they get for it. Monthly prestige, how much extra prestige they get for it fairly obvious. Now we've got the allow conditions. So inside these brackets, inside all of this, are the reasons why you can and can't have the title. So you can if you're an adult. You must be an adult, but you cannot if you're a female adult. And it has to be from a title that is feudal in nature. So patricians cannot give this title out. Makes sense. And then the primary title, we can set the tier. So I'm going to set the tier to also be king. So we'll copy this, go wait, and pop that in there, and type this back, king. If you want to restrict it as well, you can put other conditions in here, like this. So we'll make it uh, that you cannot give it unless tier of recipient equals duke. That'll be a little bit restrictive, but it's okay. We're not going to use this one as the uh, actual final test. I'm just showing you how to work it all in this, and then we'll load up my one. Okay, so those are the reasons for being able to give it, but then there is reasons that you cannot give it. So this is basically allow it if all of these are met, and these are not. So you must not be the Byzantine Empire. You must not be the Roman Empire, and you must not be the Holy Roman Empire. I added those in. I added this one in. The first two come because they have uh, titles equivalent to this one, and they actually use them. So giving them twice the amount of them would be kind of bad. I added this one in because I didn't want uh, the Holy Roman Emperor spamming things all over the place, because this is for my LP game. It's really just to add flavor, and it doesn't really add anything much in, the, in terms of, you know, stuff like that. So this is the grant. So this is who can receive it. This is who the grantor can be, so they have to meet this and not meet any of these, as in not have any of those things there. And then finally, the grantor can give it to the person as long as the person being, who the title is being given to, yeah, I know, terrible English, as long as the person who is receiving the title is not the court jester. I've added a few more in this one, so if we look at my version of the Paramount Knight, you cannot be the Paramount Knight if you have the Lord Inquisitor title as well. We'll get to that in a minute. And then you don't need to worry about this. This will be the same for every single minor title. So you can essentially copy from here and from here. And the only thing you have to change is what the title is. So what the localization refers to. In here, it's a little bit more tricky. And I generally leave it alone unless you know what you're doing. Sometimes it can be a little wonky. So I have done another one, which is a little bit different. It uses the uh, patrician 
setting. So I've created a crown prince, and as you can see, the dignity is 9, 0 0.9, so it'll outrank actual princes. And that's important because in my LP game, I have a prince that I want to give it to, so I want him to be the crown prince of the empire instead of a crown prince. And generally, it's fairly easy. Roman name is the only thing that's really changed here, and it doesn't really affect anything when it comes to minor titles. At least not that I've been able to find, so it's kind of useless. Not very important. And again, we've got the allow conditions. I've made sure that the crown prince can only be the crown prince. He can also be a knight of the realm, but he cannot be anything else. That's mainly because he gets a plus 30 opinion from, from doing it, so I didn't want to... Uh, make it able to be abused. Then again, I'm the only one using it, so I guess I could have just had a house rule, but it's it's nice. I like uh, adding in all the little conditions and stuff like that. I've also done a crown princess. The only problem is I don't actually know how to remove it from someone once they've got it, so there's that. But then again, I don't think you can actually remove any titles until the uh, person dies. So anyway, all you have to do is make sure that you keep to that syntax and you'll be set but there is one more important step, so we'll save that. We're not going to actually use it, but there is one more important step, and that is going into the localization. So you'll want to copy an existing CSV file from the localization folder, which we should have here. No. There we go. So you'll want to copy one that's got pretty much nothing in it. So is there one that's got nothing in it? You... Yeah, perfect. Perfect. So we'll copy this over, like this, and we're going to edit this one with Notepad++. We're going to remove everything and pop that in like that. Okay, so we're going to remove all of this, but we want to keep this code here. This is very important because it tells the game that the code for English, French, German, and Spanish, those are the four major languages that the game is in, and it tells it to go first to English, second to French, etc, etc. Also, this is very, very important. You must have this at the end of every single line, and it must remain the same, which is why you should always work from something that already exists. All is well. So now we can open our Imperial Flavor titles. No, not that one. Where is it? It's not here. Damn it. I did it wrong. I made a mistake. Okay, we open this one, Flavorful Titles. Edit with Notepad++, and as you can see, we've got titles in here. So this is the Paradox one that was unused. I've added a little bit to the description, but we'll take that. Copy, and because we've copied an existing thing, we've made sure that we've kept that, which is very, very important. So if we place it across like this, you'll see that now we have two lines. And if we go back like this, so this will work for our mod. It's got the title Paramount Knight, and this title Paramount Knight must match the title that you're trying to create, so change the name accordingly. That just tells the localization that the file does indeed exist, it's going right. Look for this in the rest of the files. So you can call it anything you like, we called it Knight of the Realm. Just change it for the language that you actually use in the game, it'll tell, so if you speak only French, do the French one, if you speak uh, German, do the German one. You only have to change one, because the rest of them won't come up. Same with description, I left the other descriptions in, obviously, but you could just put the C there, and that would be fine. But each of these needs to be split by a semicolon. So remember to put the semicolon in, and you must always place an underscore here, here, and here. And of course there. So the first line will be titled Paramount Knight, semicolon, name, semicolon, French name, semicolon, German name, semicolon, Spanish name, and then this. Cannot emphasize how important this is. It will not work if you change this. It must be the exact same number of semicolons, and it must have the X at the end of it. Do not mess with that. <laughs> Good. And then title Paramount Knight description. This just tells it what to show up when you hover over the button in the game. So... This is what comes with Paramount Knight Vanilla. I added this, because obviously I changed it a little bit. My Emperor is giving out these titles. So if you do that, 
Yes, save. We can cut, no, cut you. Put it into example mod. Oh, it's already there, good. You can actually just leave it as um, playable titles copy. It'll be fine. It doesn't actually make a difference. Yep, fine, fantastic. And then you're ready to fire it up. So if we fired it up now, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll fire it up now, why not? Go with example mod, start CK2. I've done it in a mini window so we can get everything set up. And it'll be easy because we can just exit by clicking on there. Now it might take a minute to start up. It'll just try and uh, localize all the files. It's a little bit uh, clunky when you first start up your computer. I had to restart mine so I could get Fraps to work properly. Otherwise, we would not be seeing this video. So that should work in a minute. So basically what you can do with that mod that I showed you how to create is change anything you really like in minor titles. The only problem is that when you give people with a minor title a title that has more dignity than the one that they currently have, it'll uh, add the realm name to the end of it. I'm not sure how to get rid of that, so if any of you know how to do that, that would be swell. I'll put that in a video and do like a follow-up thing. This this video sort of just got uh, made up as I went, because I was thinking to myself, you know what, it'll do a little bit of cross-promotion and... I can show you guys how I created it, because I'm sure somebody will ask. They'll be like, how did you do that? And I'll be like, well, I had this video. So hopefully, this should work. It'll be awfully embarrassing if it doesn't. So let's see. We've got lots of saves from my LP game. I'll load up this one. Go with that. So here we've got Emperor Nigel. This is actually my LP game, so... A hey. little bit of a uh, tag there. So our Prince Nigel, he's the heir to the Dharko Empire. Swell. We currently don't have anything we can give him. The reason we don't have anything we can give him is probably because... Did I actually select the mod? I might not have actually selected the mod. Let's see. Can we give uh, the title to this fella? No, no, we can I must have made it that I can't give the Knight of the Realm title to a Shenishkol. Or he is something else that he can't do. But anyway, there you go. You can see it there. Award it. Done. Your grandson Nigel is Norman Duke. He's also a Knight of the Realm. Sweet. So let's exit that. And now we'll load up my mod. Don't lie to me, Steam. Obviously, these are both my mods, but I'll load up my Imperial Flavor one so you can see just what we've got to deal with. And you'll actually be seeing uh, the, the LP game. So that's pretty cool, huh? I reckon that's pretty cool. Alright. So we go to single player, save games. This one will do. This is just after we took England, by the way, so... Pretty cool. So actually, yeah, I'll show you, why not? If we go to Independent Realms, this is our empire, and it is glorious. Okay, so in this one, we've got a few more different titles we can offer. So if we go to, say, Duke Osborne of Kent, we can give him the honorary title, Knight of the Realm. We could also make him the uh, Imperial Lord Inquisitor, but we won't be doing that. So I've limited it in this, that you have to be a Knight of the Realm to get certain other titles. So he has to be a Knight of the Realm before I can award him the further title of Emperor's Champion. But if I make him the Emperor's Champion, he can't then be anything else except the Imperial Lord Inquisitor. I don't know how to get rid of that. I, yeah, I derped out a little bit on that one. I think I might have just uh, left a couple of titles out of the list. But you can make anyone, basically, the uh, Lord Inquisitor. So here we go. You are now the Imperial Lord Inquisitor. And as you can see, because he was just a bishop, I... Gave, I gave the title enough dignity that it overrides what he currently has. So that's pretty cool. Is there anyone who doesn't have a job in our... Yes. You don't have a job at all. Oengus. Oengus de Glindua. Here you go. Now you're a knight of the realm. Now he's a knight of the realm. He's a knight of the realm of the Dahakor Empire. Pretty cool. And then we can make him Lord Commander of the Guard if we so chose. But then we couldn't make him the Court Jester. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's basically how you make a mod for minor titles in the game. 
and uh, hopefully this has been an educational experience for you guys, and apparently now you've all seen my Steam profile, so uh, yeah. Lucky to be you, huh? I shall see you guys next time.